Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. All praises to the Most High. So, God wants me to speak about judgment and mercy. So, basically, if you judge without mercy, you'll be judged without mercy. You'll, you'll be shown no mercy in your judgment. And it says, mercy rejoices against judgment. How does mercy rejoice against judgment? Because when God shows mercy to you, the judgments turn away. So that's why, like, throughout the Bible it says, God, for your mercy's sake, for your tender mercy's sake, because, listen, let's read two, James chapter 2, verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has shown no mercy. So if you judge somebody without mercy, then God will judge you without mercy. Okay? And mercy rejoices against judgment. If you show mercy, God will show you mercy. And judge the spirit of mercy, mercy rejoices against the spirit of judgment because your judgment is turned away when God shows mercy on you. Do you understand that? And in other scriptures, it says, mercy triumphs over judgment. How does mercy triumph over judgment? Because for God's mercy's sake, he turned away your judgment. All right. So in other versions, it says, for judgment is without mercy to the one that has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And in other versions, it says, um, for judgment will be merciless to one that has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. How does mercy triumph over judgment? Because once you show mercy, God shows mercy to you, your judgments turn away. That's why you have to show mercy to others. And in Matthew 5 and 7, you know, the New Testament tells you, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. All right, blessed are the merciful, so you shall be shown mercy. And just like you're forgiving, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you for the things that you've done. So things people need to learn that is not taught enough is love, mercy, and forgiveness. Because without those three things, you won't make it into the kingdom of God without being merciful, without being forgiving, and without having love. And people haven't mastered love. They haven't even mastered self-love. You know, God's love, God's love for his creation that goes beyond that person being your enemy, just God in creation and love of creation. They haven't learned and mastered love, love with their self and love with creation and love with God. So, and that's why they can't forgive because when you love and you mastered love, it's easy for you to forgive and to show mercy. And without someone showing mercy, they will be not showing any mercy because God is a merciful God. And to take away a judgment from someone is God's mercy. He took away the judgment of you going in eternal fire. He showed mercy on you from taking away a judgment that you may have sinned and you're going through judgment with God. But once you're merciful, he take, you're a merciful person and you're merciful to others. He'll be merciful to you. So mercy triumphs over judgment because mercy push, removes the judgment of God away from you. All right. So in Proverbs 20 and 28, it tells you mercy and truth preserve the king and his throne is upholded by mercy. Do you hear that? Mercy and truth preserve the king and his throne is upholded by mercy. Romans 11 and 31. Even so have these also now not believe that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. Mercy is, so you can obtain mercy, you better show mercy. Now, in Psalms 123 and 3, have mercy upon us, O, o Lord. Have mercy upon us, For you understand? So you must have mercy for God to show mercy to you. And it's tender mercies. Now, Psalms 6 and 4, return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. So you can get judgments turned away from you. If God has mercy on you, but you got to be merciful, right? You got to be showing mercy to receive mercy. Daniel 9 and 9, to the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgivenesses. Though we have rebelled against him, though we have rebelled, though we have sinned, 
God still gives us mercy and forgiveness, but you must be merciful and forgiving to others. That's why he told you, if you don't show no mercy, you'll be judged without mercy. And if you show, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. That's in Galatians 3 and 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. You know what's really sad? There's not a lo enough mercy, love, and forgiveness shown in families. Because, you know, obviously... You want to be loved by your family. You want to be shown mercy by your family. You want to be forgiven by your family. But a man's enemies are they of his own household. You're not, you don't want your family to be hating on you, jealous of you, fighting with you, quarreling, and going through all of that with family, fussing and fighting, discord, problems. You want peace within your family. You want, if there's, there shouldn't be family taking sides with other family. There should be, if there's a problem with a family, that they should be neutral and solve the problem that's happening with the family, not taking sides, not coming up against other people. Mercy should be shown. Forgiveness should be shown. Love should be shown. And that's the thing people have been lacking. In, like that's, That starts at home. If there's no mercy, love, and forgiveness at home, how do you think you are in a relationship with a person? How do you think you are in your friendship? How do you think you are in your businesses and your partnerships and how you treat people? Because you must show mercy. You must be forgiving. And you must show love. That starts with your family. That's how you should be with your family. And I'm not saying... And, I, and it does really suck that people's family are not forgiving. They're not merciful. And they're not loving because they have to learn that. They have to learn to show mercy. They have to learn to be forgiving. They have to learn how to love. And God is love. If they don't have God teaching them how to love, how are they going to love you right? If they don't got God healing them so they can forgive and let go, how are they going to forgive and let go? So they're not going to be treating you right. But you just got to pray for them. I know it really sucks that that stuff is not because your family is supposed to love you your family is supposed to show you mercy your family is supposed to be forgiven it's very unfortunate that people go through a lot of bad things in their family my heart goes out to you i've been through a lot as well Galatians 3 and 12 put on therefore the elect of god holy and beloved bowels of mercy kind kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering now God's tender mercies, Psalm 79 and 8. Oh, remember not against us our former iniquities. He's asking, don't remember their former iniquities. That's judgments that come with for being, you know, doing iniquity. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us. For, you understand? This is it. This is this right here. With judgment triumphing over mercy. Over, I mean, mercy triumphing over judgment. For, God, for judgment will be merciless to one that has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And then in other scriptures it says rejoices. James 2 and 13 in the King James Version. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has shown no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. So you understand how that works. Mercy rejoices against judgment. Pushes away the judgment when God is showing mercy to you. His tender mercies. Psalms 119 verse 156. Great, and great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Psalms 44 and 26. Arise for our help and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. So Psalm 77 and 9. Has God forgotten to be gracious? No, he's a gracious God. Has has he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? No, even in God's anger, he's still merciful to his creation. Now, Lamentations 3 and 22. It is for the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. He's compassionate to us. He's merciful to us. Now, in Psalms 119 and 77. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. Because... You know what the judgment is death. There's sins that be unto death. He says, Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. For thy law is my delight. 
Your mercy turns away judgment. Mercy rejoices. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Listen to this again. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. For thy law is my delight. Now great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me to thy judge, according to thy judgments. Because mercy turns away judgment so you could live. The wages of sin is death. Is that not a judgment? If God turns away the judgment of you, he had mercy on you. Psalms 25 and 6. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have ever been ever of old. God has not changed. He's the same God from the beginning to everlasting, and he won't change. Now, Psalms 103 and 4. Who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindnesses and tender mercies. There you go. Mercy rejoices over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So show mercy, so you shall be shown mercy. Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain, for they shall be shown mercy. Stay blessed, beautiful people of God.